Welcome to the Redhead Reveal Podcast. I am Jen Pinkerton, your Redhead host, a psychotherapist, writer, speaker, the private practice owner of Pinkerton Psychotherapy, and a connection expert. I help people reveal their connectedness within their relationships and sexuality, understanding root causes of beliefs and behaviors that hold them back from success, and assist them to returning to the person that they are born to be before they were limited by trauma, societal or social concerns, or attachment wounds. Redhead Reveal is here to share concerns and questions, provide interviews with thought leaders and friends, and to hold space to discuss life struggles and encourage vulnerability, authenticity, growth, and self-awareness. So I'm really excited to have my dear friend and this amazing person and human and artist, Elizabeth Waggett, here today. Thank you so much for having me, Jen. Likewise, I mean, you creating this space for us to talk it's something I've always wanted to do with you anyway and I've been looking forward to this for so long (laughs) um I want to like give everybody this glimpse into you yeah so I want to go with the bio a little bit but then I want you to kind of just also fill in the blanks for me okay of course yeah um so an artist you create works in oil charcoal and gold leaf I personally have a piece that I love so much, and it's so amazing. Um, You have gallery work and exhibitions in Los Angeles, Abu Dhabi, London, Miami, New York, Paris, Hong Kong, Zurich, Brussels. I mean, you've been everywhere. You've done everything. (laughs) Um, You have such a popular, I think, look. And even as I'm reading your bio, I, I, I... I read it and I know so personally how amazing it is. And I feel like your reach is so broad, you know, and and so many people from so many different countries really are big followers and big admirers of your work. And I'm so excited to get to be in that category as well. Um, You also have lived all over the world. You draw inspiration from that. And you hold honors degree in fashion and postgraduate design. You backpacked around the world. Um, and then you even moved to the Middle East where you met your husband, right? Yes, yeah. And then living there and then working in New York City. And then now you have a full-time practice here in Houston. Yes, yeah. So Love wonderful. It. Did I leave out something big you want to tell us about with your experience or maybe what got you in, in summation to where you are today that you want to fill I in mean, the blanks for our listeners. I think um, one of the things that people are sometimes surprised to hear is that before I became an artist full time mm-hmm. is that I was an art teacher. And that was really important in my journey to, mm-hmm. to get me to this place because I think I'd always been told in my life that art wasn't really a possibility of a, a, a strong career or a career that you can be successful in. And so I went into, you know, teaching, thinking that that would be the right thing to do. And actually, it was a chance conversation. I'd applied for a job at a very prestigious school, and they loved me, and they said, we would love to employ you, but you haven't exhibited your work anywhere, and how can you stand up in front of these children and inspire them that this is going to be a, a job for them? And so that was, like, probably the best nugget of advice, almost, you know, or critique that I've ever had for my career Mm -hmm. because it made me go yeah actually you're absolutely right and started exhibiting and never looked back um so So obviously it propelled me yeah yeah. and now I am a successful artist and I can you know I still have great relationships with a lot of the students that I used Mm -hmm. to teach and and it's really nice for me to show them that this is a possible life yeah you know because from somebody from my background from Manchester it's a very working class environment it just it wasn't something that we thought was possible Mm -hmm. you know but something that I've always loved and always wanted to pursue so I love that story um so your areas of expertise are in design Mm -hmm. and will you tell everyone who isn't familiar with your work Mm. kind of the basis of it you know yeah of course so I, I I'm very interested I think through all the places that I've lived the human experience of how we value everything from how we value um not just commodities but how we value emotions and ourselves and the thoughts and feelings and journeys that we're all on and I often use animals in my work as um I I want to capture their spirit but the spirit that we can connect with as humans Mm -hmm. um I'm very influenced by uh where I grew up which is Manchester and all the Victorian surroundings so the piece of work that you actually have yes that has um this beautiful Victorian uh pattern through it and I use that as um just that's part of my journey that I go on and then there's always this element of the divine feminine and what it is to experience and be a woman in the world today and I love that part of it I love that (laughs) um people who are looking to want to buy your work or Mm. to follow you 
I think I have your, your social handle, Elizabeth underscore Waggett, yes, right? Yes, so correct. people can see it. If they want to purchase Absolutely, something, yeah. they can find you yeah, that way, right? Yeah, they can get in touch. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so, you know, I don't normally have someone on the podcast that isn't in the mental health space, right. except if someone has also experienced a transformation mm -hmm. in their own life mm -hmm. with mental health, with trauma, mm -hmm. with recovery. Yes. That is where I'm super interested. Yeah. And the fact that you take so much of what I see as your journey in that space yes. and apply it in your work with yes. the divine feminine, yes. with really this connection to nature and grounding, mm -hmm. all that really resonates with me. Yeah. So kind of that being said, I want to dive into a little bit of this journey that I know you've been on, that mm -hmm. we've talked about a little bit. And I want to share that with our audience yeah. because I know that you personally, you know, we're living this amazing life, but then experience an injury mm -hmm. and we're forced to maybe look at things a little bit differently yeah. and that you did some trauma work. You did some, some personal journey mm -hmm. and personal reflection. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to tell me about that? I would love to, to kind of get your insight of how that started for you. It was Honestly, like, I want to also say that, that this happened, this injury happened at the same time as the birth of my daughter. Mm -hmm. And so I had a newborn baby and I was also paralyzed from the waist down. And it was, there's a quote out there that says it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Yes. I think that sums it up so well. Um, it was the most horrendous thought to be told and, and I... I don't know why I'm here walking today, but I am. Um, and I still have many issues, but I can walk. And I thought I would never walk again. And to be told that is just absolutely like devastating, especially at the time and experience of your life where you're expecting something totally different. Well, you were supposed to be surrounded by joy. Yes. This was supposed to be a, a time of awe and wonderment yeah. and joy. Yeah. And instead you had all those things, but it was coupled yes. with fear, I imagine, oh, and pain. Fear and pain, yeah, physical mm -hmm. pain, mental pain. Um, it, was, it was a point in my life that, even though it was the worst, and now I would never wish it upon anyone or want to go through that myself ever again, but it has changed me for the better. So um, I've always been somebody that likes to look on the brighter side of yes. things, but I do really feel that it has made me a, better, a much better person. It's made me a much better mother, much better wife. It's made me understand a lot of things. It's made me... Um, put up some boundaries and put some things in place and it's actually sent me on a huge journey that that initial trauma you know my, my husband sat down with me um probably just absolutely beside him, uh, himself because it was during covid as well so it wasn't like we had any other support right. it was just me and him and the baby and he really needed some some help with with me and and the baby as well and and he said you are going to go to therapy like I've I've signed you up, like, we've got to do this. And so mm -hmm. for him, even though I, I just didn't want to see anyone, I didn't want to go anywhere, I felt ashamed, I, you know, all of these different things. I There's went, a lot of darkness in that. Huge, you know, yeah. it, it, fear is is very paralyzing. Yes. You know, in addition to make us yeah. feel as though I can't, I, I not only were you dealing with the physical limitation of not being able to, to walk and to move, it's the, it's the emotional yeah. and the mental, you know, yeah. limitation that I'm yes. stuck. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. Yeah, you, you really don't. And the, and I felt like a failure as a mother as well. Mm -hmm. I felt like that they would be better off without me. I just mm -hmm. thought that mm -hmm. I was, you know, it was just... And to think that now is... But those are the very real... That's how dark it was That's how you. dark it was, mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, I started... I, I actually went had a couple of therapy sessions with different people and then I you know it was going to offices and things like that and I I just said I can't I can't keep doing this because we were going to so mm -hmm. many different medical appointments three and four a day with a newborn mm -hmm. baby strapped in the seat and I was breastfeeding and it was and I said there's one you know I just need to be at home so he found someone who's still my therapist today and she's wonderful um and she specialized in CBT therapy and mm -hmm. Um, we had phone calls. So I, I only just recently really met her in the last six months. Um, so we had phone calls and she hugely changed my perspective on mm -hmm. things um, and the work that we did there. But one of the most important things I think that I've found is with that huge trauma, it's actually opened up 
a lot of understanding about how you deal with trauma is based on your childhood and your past experiences. And actually, those have ended up being bigger. Mm -hmm. Those have ended up being bigger. The the getting over what happened in terms of the, the, the accident, the injury, has been a much easier thing for me to do actually Mm -hmm. even though you might think that's just like just so dark and horrendous and obviously it might we might be in a very different situation if I hadn't have been on this path to recovery but the trauma that was experienced like as in my childhood that I'd never really properly addressed I thought I had but Mm -hmm. I just hadn't and that's the thing about trauma. And and we speak a lot about it on this podcast. I talk mm. often about that we can't help what happens to us. And, right. and it's not our fault. Yeah. But we have the opportunity to do something different with it. Right. We can change who we become. Yes. We can change what we what we learn, what we grow, and, and how we find a journey, find a path to yeah. being something different, feeling something different, looking at the world differently. Wow. Yeah. And and trauma we feel like can limit us from that because mm. it's so scary. It's so mm. scary to do that emotional work and it, to open Pandora's box sometimes oh, is what yeah. it feels like. Yes. And I think oftentimes most people go in the world thinking I've either had no trauma or oh it's I'm fine. I'm fine. I've compartmentalized it. Yes. I've repressed it. I've yeah. shoved it way down. <laughs> All these things and and everybody has their own trauma response mm. where they may not recognize that it's showing up in their relationships. Mm. If they've learned how to compartmentalize and they might be the kind of person that just people pleases or they shut down or they flee and yeah. you know, they don't recognize how it is insidious and it can affect mm. every different part of how we function. Right. Now you had this catalyst, you had yes. this experience that caused you to go down that path. Yeah. And then when you're there, suddenly you learn all these things about your attachment. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm I'm very much I have to be honest, I'm very much still on that journey and I'm mm-hmm. I think because that kind of those childhood experiences they've happened for so long and they're so ingrained in you in your personality right. and it's something that you know I'm, I'm 40 years old next year so this is something that I'm realizing just now mm-hmm. but having a, a professional validate you is just it's the biggest move anyone can make I think it's so so important I agree. to validate your experience you can talk to your friends and family as much as you like but that was key for me was having a professional actually validate what I had been through in my childhood Mm -hmm. and um I'm very much still on that journey and I find it hard and I you know we we talk about gaslighting myself all the time Mm -hmm. and you know those sorts of things so that's harder Mm -hmm. honestly that is is much harder for me personally because I I think it's just been so so long of going through these Mm -hmm. you know maybe smaller events Mm -hmm. it's been much harder but I wouldn't have probably got this kind of help if I hadn't have been through uh, that's a silver lining yeah Mm -hmm. 100 percent yeah right and I think it's something that I'm gonna have to always acknowledge and always think about but it has made me stop and think about those things you know if I am getting into an argument with my husband Mm -hmm. you know thinking about how I'm approaching that and why I might be approaching it in that way or Mm -hmm. and also giving myself grace as well you know just Mm -hmm. being human and and going okay why did I react like that Mm -hmm. this might be why and you make the apologies you know or well what I'm hearing you say is this self-compassion I'm hearing self-love and that's the thing that until we do some work we don't often hold space for our own sense of self-love you know that inner voice in our head our inner critic is so powerful yeah and we oftentimes don't recognize we just go through life assuming that's just the way it is but then once we do a little bit of work we can embrace there's a totally different way to talk to ourselves and to have that grace for yourself in that moment and to also recognize how is this trauma that I've experienced showing up in my relationship Mm. and what have I learned what tools do I have now to look at it differently. Right, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, mm-hmm. It's, again, it's still something that I'm very much trying. That that part, I've, I think I've grasped quite well, that part mm-hmm. in, in terms of, you know, this is this is maybe why. and But unlearning a lot of the behaviours that I think you have been mm-hmm. stuck in, that that's difficult. And you know what I find the hardest is the acknowledgement that, 
you feel, you almost feel like you're in some kind of movie or, mm-hmm. you know, soap opera or something that, that, oh, that, that was my life. That was my childhood. This is who I am. I mean, I can laugh about it now, but I was saying to my husband, if I had a dating profile, you would just not go near me. You know? Red flags, red flags <laughs> popping up everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, well done to you because, um, and I find that hard to accept. I find that part. And, and I guess when I went through, my injury and everything, I also found that hard. I was like, this is not my story. Mm-hmm. I am not going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. This right. is not my story. And that was a bit more of a determined thing to get over. But the the long-winded childhood stuff is just, it's a, it's a minefield for me. And um, yeah, I'm still... Well, and to go from thinking, okay, this I'm going to be in a wheelchair, to now to sit here and be yeah. in a life where you're thriving. Yes. You know, that yeah. is an yeah. amazing story in itself. Yes, it is. And then to couple with that, you did some work. You went back in and thought, why Why do I feel the way I feel about so mm-hmm. many things? And to recognize the familiar wounds. Because when we incur any sort of trauma later in life, it most always, when we start doing a little work, we recognize, oh, this, this correlates to this other trauma. There's a familiar wound here. Mm-hmm. Because we also repeat what we don't heal. Right. And and wow. there's there's parallels, there's a familiarity, and if our mind doesn't know what our body sure does, because wow. our body never forgets, you yeah. know? Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, whilst I was going through physical therapy, and I just think physical therapists are just some of the best humans on earth, you know, they, they really understand the full mm-hmm. extent of the body. And every single one of them said to me, you know, people show up with all sorts of odd complaints like it might be their back or their shoulder or something and it's it's actually usually trauma that they've mm-hmm. been through not like an actual injury yes. of trauma like a emotional trauma mm-hmm. and it's showing up physically it manifests in right. their body and that's the difference between the big t trauma or the little t trauma mm-hmm. which we talk about a lot here um you know recognizing that our body keeps the score if i'm going to quote one of my favorite books but yeah. but to recognize that it is there and it will always stay there until we do some work to release it Yes. And and that's a journey that's sometimes really scary. It's a scary path to go down. Yeah. But I often tell people that if we can look at it as let's have a moment of discomfort mm. to then have a lifetime of feeling yeah. great about yeah. who we are, about being in our bodies mm. and, and, and what we put out into the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I would have to say that um during the therapy sessions that I've had, once I found it great at first because it was all about getting over the accident and, the, you know, all of that was really, really helpful. And then once we got into, you know, childhood and past traumas, mm-hmm. once we got into that, I found it very hard. And every after every session, it was like, oof, you know, and yeah. just needed a moment. And, and sometimes I just didn't look forward to those sessions because mm-hmm. were, they were big and they were, and and, you know, you're, accepting things that you have like you said suppressed and yes. and dug deep down mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it just turns around and now I just can't wait to have those sessions right. too yeah because it goes from feeling powerless mm. to feeling powerful mm-hmm. and when we recognize we can harness that inner power we mm. can now decide that we get to choose what our life is going to look like yeah because frankly at the end of the day the only person that can define us is ourselves right and yeah. what story do we want it to be? Yeah. You know, yeah. you just decided you weren't going to be in a wheelchair. That wasn't going to be your story. Mm. You know, yeah. it can also be, I suffered childhood trauma. That's not going to be my story that it's going to affect every single relationship I'm in for the no. rest of my life. No. And that's why I think getting therapy is so unbelievably mm. important, especially for people who want to sit there and say, I don't have any, I don't have anything. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we all encounter or experience something in our life that's difficult. Absolutely. Yeah. And most of the time we need to do some work to, mm. to look at that different and to change our perspective and our mm. worldview and have some insight into who we are right. and what made us who we are. You know, yeah. the foundation, our love lessons that we had contribute so much to forming this amazing person that we are. And do we even look at ourselves as being amazing? You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's difficult. That's very difficult. I think, um, you know, I when I was thinking about coming to, to, to speak to you today, I just wanted to be obviously as absolutely open as possible. Yes. And, you know, some of those things are difficult to share, but I just want to be an open book because I think for me, like I said, I'm 40 years old next year. I always, I had this very gray area mm-hmm. in my childhood of, of you know, abuse that was not necessarily worst, but not, but it was a form of abuse. 
And I think there's a lot of people out there who have also been through that and are told, oh, it's just the way it was, or that's just uncle whatever who's a bit weird, or this, you know, Mm -hmm. we let things go. And I I think it's important for, for us to discuss this today because if if I could just help one person go to therapy and discuss something that potentially has been niggling at them or mm-hmm. some family dynamic or something that mm-hmm. could help them realise, actually, no, what you went through was terrible and this person is still doing this to mm-hmm. you. And this, you know, that's important to me. And it is you know, because if if someone hears that and has the courage to seek some help, to mm-hmm. get some help, the gray area is no longer gray. It's no longer gray. We can recapture memories. Yeah. We can actually also write a new narrative for how our brain looks at that experience. Mm. So it doesn't feel so traumatic because obviously it was traumatic enough that your body wanted to disassociate and make you forget it. And, right. and then we can feel safe enough in our bodies to remember it and to feel differently about it mm-hmm. and to be able to heal from that, mm. you know, work through it and heal from, from that painful experience, whatever it may be. Mm. You know? Yeah. What are then um, some of the things that you speak to with your clients in sessions about how they can first, what would be like the first step that you might give somebody on on something? Say they came to you mm-hmm. with, you know, yeah. actually, I'm, I'm unsure. Like what you're we, talking we've about. We've got like, a really happy family really, life. I remember I'm, something. Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. something. But, you know, has this happened or that happened? Or just, you know, actually, is this that bad? And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh. Like my therapist, like, right. This is dreadful. Like, I, right. you know, you've well, been Well, I heard you this. just now even do a little bit of minimization. It's like I experienced something wasn't the worst. And the thing is, we don't have to minimize it. No. Trauma is trauma. Yeah. We don't have to minimize it. Yeah. It's painful. It's not to be compared. It's right. not to be minimized. Yes. There is no competition. There's no winner. There's no loser. No. It's simply the fact that we experienced something that was traumatic. Okay. And anything that o- overwhelms our body's ability to cope is mm. traumatic. Yeah, and, and it's not going to be something that's measured against somebody else's experience because at the end of the day, it hurt us. Yeah, it limited us. It has held us back from thriving and being the person that we want to be. So that in itself tells you that's a journey I want to take yes. because I don't want anything to limit me. I want to no. be able to shine. I want to be yeah. bright and bold and live my life in that way. So we have to heal from whatever it is that holds us back. Wow. And so when someone comes and they to seek therapy and they, they're not really sure why they're here, but something doesn't feel right. Oftentimes it's, let's go down a timeline of your life. Let's do an attachment assessment. Let's understand what kind of messages did you receive in your childhood? Mm-hmm. What did you learn? What was expected of you? Who comforted you? What kind of emotional attunement mm-hmm. did you have? You know, yeah. what was your life like? And what do you remember? And what did you forget? You know? Oh, yeah. And, and boundaries is something that comes out of this work. Mm-hmm. Most people don't have any clue of how to live a life with healthy boundaries. Mm-hmm. And you yourself mentioned that. So you've <laughs> done some boundary work. I've done some boundary work, but I struggle, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes just... and I know, but, but I have to say... That what I can do now is if I do something that I think I've let myself down because I didn't put those boundaries Mm -hmm. in place and those are my boundaries, afterwards I will recognize that, Mm -hmm. you know. And everything is a choice and everything is something that you... I understand how to put boundaries up now. That's great. Or use my boundaries, but I'm still still very much learning on that process, you know. Well, I say boundaries are badass. I say this all the time. And it is a work in progress because yeah. we're also a work in progress. Yes. And there's going to be some scenarios where it's easier to do that and some in which it's not. Mm. And the ones that it's not, that might be our cue to say, I might need to do a little more work here. Mm. I might need to have more of an emphasis in this chapter of my life because I have a lot of trouble here. Mm. Yeah. You know? what, what is conflicting? What are the messages? Am I trying to earn love so I can't really put a boundary up? Right. Or is this person representing something I want to be and it's not really authentic to me? Yeah. So am I struggling with my own authenticity? Yeah. You know, there's a lot that can be learned from how where in our life we're unable to to set that boundary. What work mm. is there in that space? Yeah. You know, that's really interesting. I think I find it difficult with boundaries that I'll revert back to just my default maybe people pleasing mm-hmm. um, fawning mm-hmm. yes and doing things like saying oh yes let's do this let's do that and then and really meaning it in the moment sure. really thinking that this will be great but sure. actually not fully thinking of the 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 full consequences of mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. um you know so i agree with you i think that one of the biggest journeys is to be able to learn how to say I'm going to have to get back with you. That sounds amazing, yeah. but I'm not certain I can do that. Or no, or I'm uncomfortable with that, or I'm not sure. 
You know, sometimes I I agree with you. We can feel forced to say, oh, absolutely. Because it sounds good at the time. Right. You know? And you think it's going to be good. And Mm -hmm. then you start thinking actually through it properly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, we only get one life to live. And and I think if we try to make our life surrounded by the fact that we're guiding it, we're choosing it, Mm -hmm. we're dictating it. Yes. You know, that's when we we let in so much opportunity for amazing things to happen. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think it... (sighs) It's just been so inspiring for me to accept everything and Mm -hmm. understand everything. And Mm -hmm. as an artist, Mm -hmm. take that forward and apply that to my work as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I know not everybody gets to do that in their work, but Mm -hmm. just to be able to live like authentically and not be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. There's so much shame. There is. Especially in generations, you know, that are my generation and older there's so much shame in those things that are often come from families and it's people want to bury their head in the sand or say oh well it was just like that back then and and that's not okay right Right. and um I think that being able to use that productively in my work has also been very helpful well that's a wonderful outlet for you Mm. to be able to abolish shame to be able to look at your life differently yeah because you know you you experienced trauma yeah and it was really painful yeah and I hate that you went through that and I'm glad to know that you've gone down this journey to look at it differently yeah you know and to heal from that yeah and to see you today you know I I met you when you were in recovery yeah from your injury yeah and to see you today, you wouldn't know that. Yeah, know? yeah, they were some dark times. <laughs> but, you know, I think having just, you have this, like, lovely aura, but you can also see that you're a badass woman who is also not going to, you know, you have your boundaries as well. And I yes. was always, I've always been drawn to you with that because you can just see this, you have such strength around you. And to meet you at that time, you really helped me in so many ways just to, oh to seek help and know that also I think traditionally when we think of maybe and maybe this is a very British thing as well because we are a bit (laughs) in the dark ages but traditionally when we think of therapists we might not think of it as being somebody as open and warm and lovely and gorgeous Mm -hmm. as you you know and somebody that you can see yourself in and I think that's important actually sometimes when you're seeking therapy Mm -hmm. is that you can align with that Mm -hmm. you know so I do hear clients say that yeah I I, I do understand that. yeah you you gave me that you gave me that impetus to say, actually, yeah, this is there's people out there that want to help. Absolutely. Yeah, that mm-hmm. understand and un- understand my journey. That's right. Yeah, and and to be able to hold space for yourself, for you to think, I, Elizabeth, am worth the time and the space to figure this out, mm. to understand why I feel the way I feel, mm. to heal from the things I haven't wanted to talk about. You yeah. Know? I mean, that's that's so empowering for other people to hear. Yeah, definitely. Well, I hope so. I hope that it will help some people because I do think my particular journey that I've been through is is something that I've always been quite, a, you know, people, people, a lot of my friends think I'm really strong and I'm the person that, you know, would just mm-hmm. be fine with everything. And actually, you know, I think a lot of strong, I've got that strength because I've had to defend myself my whole life, mm-hmm. you know, Um and so and that's was, an interesting perspective because see I wouldn't know that seeing that right. from you and what you put out in the energy you put in the world but I love hearing that that you've recognized that that you know that now yeah oh I know I can be too much yeah. I know I can be like too much for a lot of people I know that oh I don't think there's such thing as too much well, somebody should go find less yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Aries as well so we're quite fiery um but you know I can be I think I think sometimes I, like my assistant actually said to me today he was like I'm not going to do that because you scare me. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm so sorry too much, but I'm very mu- I'm very straight talking. Mm-hmm. I think everybody knows where they stand mm-hmm. with me, but I think I have been told throughout my life that you know I'm I've said too much or I've done too much or I've been too honest and open, and I stand by. I don't regret ever saying the truth because the truth is like so so important and even at times yes. when people made me feel ashamed for it I don't mm-hmm. regret it and I w- but that's on them Elizabeth not on you right mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and that usually has to do with them their own reasons for not wanting to embrace truth their own reasons for what it might say about them for what it might expose about them for what it might mean to them again it that, that that's a mm-hmm. that's a their problem that is a their you know? problem yeah not yours there's many people out there with that problem, mm-hmm. then, isn't there? They just don't yes. want to acknowledge that that's at right. all. Yeah, that's right. or find or or help somebody. I think you know 
when I was younger and my sister was younger and we were going through certain things, we reached out to people, adults Mm -hmm. that we trusted. Mm -hmm. They didn't help us. They they weren't there for you. No, they weren't there for us. Because we are a compilation. You know, we're some of all of our parts and and we have all these parts that work against Mm. us. And to be able to do the work to recognize, I want to live a life where I'm thriving Mm. and I'm not held back or limited by anything, especially not experiences that shaped me that, I, that I've never even given attention to. Yeah. And so what? What I happened to me when I was five is now going to affect me in my 50s? That's not any fun. I know. You know, we don't want to live our life like that. And you can go through life being quite a, a zombie to that, not knowing that what happened to you when you were five. That's right. Yes. And that, that's honestly that's mm-hmm. honestly what was happening to me, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I, I, I learned on on this journey of, of you know, big big T trauma of the the injury and everything that there are studies that show because I was diagnosed with PTSD at that time and still I think I don't know if that's something you graduate from I'm still working through that part I think that it is a journey it's a journey journey. um Mm. but I learned at that time that there's been lots of studies that show that a lot of people can go through something life-changing terrible trauma and not get ptsd because as a child they were safe they were made to feel safe and if well it's you were, resiliency they have a high right, level of resiliency, resiliency yeah. because they had emotional safety right mm-hmm. and or so, physical safety both both yeah um so understanding that actually it's it can be what you've been through if you didn't feel safe can mm-hmm. actually then make things more unsafe for you so you will then feel tri- and then this has been a process of the ptsd and the and the i hate to use that word triggers all the time because but it's like applicable people, it is it, applicable yeah. you know but there's it is moments misused where you, in the world but yeah the, the way you're referring is, it, right. is completely accurate it yes. is a trigger and how you respond yes like going to certain places that you associate with that or, right. or having to do something i remember the first time um well, I had this beautiful sports car, and I, just, I, I love my cars. That's just one of those things. And I had this beautiful car, and I wasn't able to drive it. And my husband took me to sell it with me in it. Mm. And this, he's wonderful, so <laughs> we don't think any. But I broke down when we were in the like the car. We were at Mercedes, you know, selling it back to them. And I, just, I wanted to just trash every computer in there. I felt angry. I was sad. I just this moment of this could be the last ride I've ever had in my car because I can't drive, you mm-hmm. know? And that that was the kind of trigger that I'm talking about. Yes. I'm trying to understand. That mm-hmm. I think that's that's a real use of the word trigger because yes. I was triggered. Because it's, it, it's about the memory. Because yeah. it's not just the experience of trauma. It's the memory associated with it. Right. It's the memory surrounding it. And it's what reminds our body of these danger signals that fire off on our body. We're mm. not safe yes. because of this, because yeah. it reminds us of this, because of the familiar wound mm. and because of the unresolved trauma. Yeah, yeah. And I still feel very, very unsafe a lot of the time. I think my, I think potentially that's part of that is becoming a mother and just being more hypervigilant and aware For of sure. what's going on around. Yes. But yeah, there are things where I'm like, I'm, oh, I'm just safety, safety conscious mm-hmm. to the point where it can sometimes cause arguments in our household. Because but you have an awareness of it. I so do. That's when you can have that communication to talk about it, mm. to be able to say, you know, I'm not sure if I'm doing this because I'm being more hypervigilant, yes. because I'm just worried about Darcy, or am I being hypervigilant yes. because I'm bringing in a lot of my feelings that I have from these past yeah. experiences that were painful to me. Yeah. And then there's the, the the dealing with understanding. I think when you've been through certain things, trying to not have a negative experience of everybody just because one person's done that but then for me right now I honestly if I'm honest with you Jen I just I look at a lot of peep certain people won't you know mention any names but I, I I look at certain people and I think you could be a bad person you could be a bad person you're not mm-hmm. coming near my daughter you're not. and I think potentially because I've opened up this can of worms mm-hmm. one of a better word I'm also finding out this isn't rare. What I went through is not rare. It's mm-hmm. not unusual. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of bad people in the world that mm-hmm. do bad things to children and adults. And, you know, and the cycle continues. And so yes. I'm still, I don't necessarily want to let go at this point of my hypervigilance around that because it's what I'm meant to do is protect my daughter That's right now. That's absolutely right. And myself. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to not be cynical. Mm-hmm. 
But I think that you you look at life in the way that I'm going to surround myself with the people that I love and love me. I'm going to yeah. create an environment of people mm-hmm. that I know I can have that emotional and physical safety with. Yes. And and, yeah. and when we find our people, and oftentimes it's much later in life when we learn mm-hmm. how to create the yeah. right boundaries, how to create the right framework of what we need in a relationship mm-hmm. with friendships, yeah. that that changes that. It's like an insulation. I look at it that way. Yeah, you know, yeah. insulating yourself and your life and protecting it from the external forces in your life, mm-hmm. and that takes a little bit, I think, of growth emotionally to be able to get to that point to do that. Yes, and I think that falls okay. in line with what you're saying because yes, the world is very scary and dangerous place, but we don't want to live a fear-based life. So it's the balance between no, the two. No. You know, you have to protect your daughter 100%. Yeah. yeah. You know, and protect yourself. Yes. You yeah, know? definitely. And I think I am still a little bit fear-based, mm-hmm. but that's, and, and I, I understand why. So that's okay. So again, I'm giving myself the grace that, and that, that's yeah. what's so important yeah. is, is the self-compassion. We have to have compassion for ourselves in order to have it for anyone else. Mm. And sometimes that's the missing chip. Yeah, you know? We've got to be able to recognize what is the voice in our head. You know, what's our inner critic? Yeah. And how do and we what's talk real? to ourselves? That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Definitely. For yeah. sure. Yeah. And so yeah. now here you are with, with a lot of this under your belt, feeling like you can look in the rearview mirror and go, oh, I've been through some really significant undertakings mm. lately in my life. I've done a lot of yeah. uh, reflection, right. you know, and my self-awareness then, of course, exponentially increases. It, oh, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. it's And I find it quite exciting. I know that might be a strange thing to say, but I find it quite exciting because you're, I'm, I'm always someone who loves learning about mm-hmm. things, but learning about yourself mm-hmm. and learning how you react to things and the world around you mm-hmm. is that I think it's the most important investment in yourself. So, you know, therapy, I think for some people, especially, you know, um, in, in the UK where I'm from and we have like a, mm-hmm. a government based healthcare system there. You know, it's not as easily accessible for people Mm -hmm. and it can be very expensive, as it can here, right, Mm -hmm. for certain people. But I think it's just like the best investment you can make is Mm -hmm. any investment in yourself. That's right. Right? Um, And so not only am I feeling really enlightened and privileged and happy right now, I also am excited to learn more. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, right, what else can I do? What else? Because I, like I said, I'm still on the journey. I still have some understanding to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm not looking at this as a, oh, it's done. I'm done with therapy, everything's fixed kind of thing. I want to be on this trajectory Mm -hmm. for for as long as I'm alive because I'm just learning more and more about myself, about the world around me, about other people, and having that with a professional Mm -hmm. who can hold a safe space for you is just the most liberating. I can't even put into words how important of a step that was for me it's the most liberating thing that has happened to me in my life because again I came from a background where potentially therapy and things wasn't necessarily accessible Mm -hmm. and I think we are is also you know 2023 Mm -hmm. it's a it's a big topic and that's great and I love that because you know, you can happily speak to people about, oh, my therapist said this, mm-hmm. my therapist mm-hmm. said that, and maybe there would have been right. 10, the 20 years gone. ago. Stigma, yes. yeah, the stigma yes. is gone. Yes. It's absolutely mm-hmm. gone. And that's just really exciting that we can share experiences mm-hmm. and we can say this. And I know um, from, from uh, even though it's my journey and I have to be very careful of what I say, you know, there's certain things with, I have a sister who I mm-hmm. love and adore and we sure. share experiences from our childhood and I can tell her, little pearls of wisdom that I've got from therapy and that's really helped her as well you that's know wonderful. so and I agree with you I concur with this idea that it's exciting because mm. while it's scary and while it, it it takes courage to yeah. seek help and get help once you're doing that yes it is so exciting because you recognize I can be so much more oh, yeah. my life can be so much bigger and fuller and more joyous and more full of of, of different insight and yes. perspectives yeah and we don't have to be stuck in this small little place that I think sometimes that's where we exist because that's where we felt safe yeah. that was our maladaptive coping school we used that served us so beautifully at the time mm. but now as an adult is that the way we want to live no you know we, no. we wouldn't want to thrive we're in the world now where people talk about leveling up and growth mindset and all these things yeah. well 
you know, I don't think you can possibly level up or have a growth mindset if you haven't dealt with your own stuff. Oh, 100%. That's and I think it's such thing. a missing link when I see so much of that out today yeah. you know, in the world. And it's such a common, amazing, great thing that people want to do that. But I do believe it starts with looking inward. Yeah. You know? Because how are you going to be able to do those things when you've got this block that's telling that's you all right. the time? So for somebody like my like myself who had some self-loathing behaviors and, and mm-hmm. things like that, if I, I, I would always be inspired by these amazing, I'm a big podcast listener, so I'd be mm-hmm. inspired by these amazing podcasts and think, oh yeah, I can do that. But then, I, oh no, I can't do that because mm-hmm. why would I be able to do that? Mm-hmm. You know, and this and rhetoric that's the voice in your head. In your head. That's so the you narrative. have to deal with that first. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it's just... It's been amazing, honestly. And to sit down with you today and talk about how incredible it's been and reflecting on the -hmm. last two years, it's been two years of therapy. Is and and I am just excited. And that that dark part, that hard part that you talk about, and it and it does take courage, the discomfort. It's such a small it's the initial it's not even necessarily the first well, I didn't find it like that. The first part's really great and exciting, and yes. then you have to get into a bit of the darker stuff, That's right. and then you just get through that. That's right. Because the only way out is through. Through, yes. And and it, I love what you're saying about that, because I agree totally. It's it's just, it's the smallest part of what is so amazing to come. Yeah. You know? I know. So I, I, I just, wish I could give the gift of everyone I know to seek some help in that because it it, it is so life-changing I tell everybody I see everybody mm-hmm. you know that I know I'm just like therapy is the best thing I've ever done well yeah. and you have a great story that I think creates a lot of buy-in because you you experience something that a lot of people resonate with big t trauma that physical aspect mm. of trauma much more than they resonate with little t trauma a lot of right. people really minimize that and think oh just because I you know didn't feel very worthy growing up or that doesn't mean anything. And they don't they don't give credit or hold no. space for how impactful that is. Yeah. And so for you, you were able to have have your experience guide you to recognize the other aspect of that as well. Yeah. And, you know, as well. And and I think people will see that differently. Yeah. And really it can resonate with other people. I hope so. And you know, I hope people don't have to go through big T trauma to get to it. But it's the I, I mean, I I hope I'm using this in the right way, but the the smaller less significant traumas that happen growing up are actually that they're the they're the harder ones to to work mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. yes you know yes you know I don't compare any of it I just look at that that we all suffer from something oh yeah whether Everybody. we want to own it or not yeah. and, and there's something that holds us back every one of us can improve in some way shape or form mm. so why don't we want to try because last time I checked we're all capable of doing the hard things oh yeah aren't we mm-hmm. yeah that's right we? well it's been such a pleasure oh, speaking you with so you much. and having you on yeah, here today once again if it. anybody wants to find um some of elizabeth's amazing art you can find her on elizabeth underscore waggett and that's w-a-g-g-e-t-t so I urge you all to check out her amazing work. I, I wish I had my piece here in the studio <laughs> on the camera. We might have to flash to a piece in the recording because it's just so amazing. Oh, thank you and so I'm much. Just, I feel so so honored to get to know you and call you my friend. And thank you Same. for joining me today. I'm, I'm so lucky. And thank you for holding this space for me and everybody else. What you do is just life-changing and so important. So thank you, darling. Thank you. Okay, one thing we do on the podcast when we're coming to the close is I always ask my guest for a question that you want to pose to future guests, and then I've got a question to ask you that I guess is left for you. So we'll start with that. So a prior guest asked, are you living your best life today? And if not, what are you going to do about it? So what would you say to that? That's a big one, isn't it? Um, I would say I feel very close to that, Mm -hmm. um, to living my best life. And almost I want to say yes, because I think the reason that I'm saying, I'm thinking in my head, it's like, I'm not quite there, is probably because of all the noise, the exterior noise of, oh, you should be doing this, and you should be doing that, and this, this, and this. So I feel in a very content and happy place Mm -hmm. are the things that I think at any point of anyone's life you would want to change, yes, but Mm -hmm. I'm... I couldn't be happier right now. I mean, I have a two-year-old daughter who is just an angel. And I know that that's going to go by really, really quickly. It does. <laughs> so I'm just trying to luxuriate in that. Um, yes. But the things that I would say that I would change 
to make life better is that I'm going to continue to focus on my own boundaries and giving myself grace and practicing more self-love. Those are definitely things. I do think the more you practice those things, and I I am terrible for doing it, even if it's self-love in the way of, you know, having a morning walk or Mm -hmm. a meditation or your favorite. Yeah, self-care is Mm self-love. I'm terrible for doing that because I move everything off my schedule to work, you know. But when you do that, everything else fits into place much more easier. Everything flows more easier. I agree. So I think I have to. And I'm really glad somebody asked that question because now I'm going to go home and I really am going <laughs> to put, I'm going to have to put something like that into place. That's yeah. great. Good. Yes. I'm glad I can yeah. motivate some yeah. change in that. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. What question would you like to leave for a future guest? Okay. I would like to say to a future guest, if you can go back and imagine your five-year-old self, what would you tell your five-year-old self to do now that you think would exponentially change your life as it is right now? So what piece of advice could you give that little boy or little girl? That's you a know, good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. I can't yeah. wait to see what that answer is. <laughs> I can't wait. Tune in for the future <laughs> answer on that. All right. Again, thank you so much for coming on. Thank this. you, that darling. It was wonderful. Thank really you lovely. So much. much love to you.